Hello, welcome again. I was asked to go over the basics of uh, automotive diagrams. I used this one time, but I think it's a, a very helpful uh, diagram. We always start with the top going from the battery towards the ground when we analyze a schematic. Now, when you start at the top, usually there's a battery for automotive. As you see over here, the plus sign dictates the battery of the polarity of the battery there is no negative but we know it's connected to negative over here so this is a 12 volt battery obviously because it's an automotive battery now starting from the positive the post of the battery we come to fuses this line over here this rectangular line indicates that these components inside of this is located under hood fuse relay box. That's why it's in a closed box. So number 41, number 42, and number 48 are all located in here. Fuse relay box. Let's start from point to point. <clears throat> from the positive side of the battery, we make a connection. We put a wire to one side of a fuse called an 80 amp fuse, this is the rating, number 41 fuse. Now, it's important, sometimes, as you see, usually in diagrams we have the fuses, they say um, e ECM fuse or PCM fuse, or they're identified. In this simple diagram, they're not. But, by sometimes by when you go to Ford, you look at the fuse panel, their number they don't say what it's for which is a little which is a little tricky at times so let's say you have this diagram over here see doesn't really tell you the name of it sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't like you see over here fuse it just says the fuse as a 30 amps and as usual where it's located so sometimes it does say ecm or pcm or things like that so that's something we just have to incorporate and just try to get used to. From the other side of this fuse, which is number 41, it goes to a number 42 fuse. And at the same time, there's another connection. This is a splice, meaning a, a, a pair of connections. One connection here, one connection here. This means a splice. So now we have number 42 fuse rated at 40 amps. We have a number 48 fuse rated at 30 amps, which is the least rated amps, number 48. So after this, we come to this. As you zoom out, you see there are two paths. One here and another one over here. Going here and another path going here. Another path going here. Every time there's a... a a splice that means there's another path for you to follow so you can follow this path you can follow this path this path it all depends what you're looking for okay if you're looking for high beams you will be looking at this over here these bulbs over here naturally you'll be dealing with over here but let's go point by point first we're going to go over here this is a module for the lighting. We're going to go over here, and the other side of this number 42 fuse, rated at 40 amps, goes to a wire, a connection of white plus a black stripe. You'll notice, usually it tells you the color of the wire. Usually you go when you go from one component to another component, it'll change colors. Over here we have a little splice. I don't know if you can see it. But that means there's another connection. So we go from white, black, to over here, white. We come out white. So let's follow first this path. And then we'll go back to the voltages. We go to something called, over here, an ignition switch. One side of the ignition switch is called battery over here. The other side, ignition two. That in re resembles... You look at a real diagram, this is the ignition switch. But you see the ignition switch over here? 
you have different positions. In that diagram, it just makes it very simple. We're going through a, a simple switch. But this is the real symbol for ignition switch. Okay? So, when you see that one, you'll be familiar with it. But anyway, for our purposes, just trying to learn how to read a schematic, this will suffice. So, we're going into one side of this ignition switch. We come out the other side. Now, remember, we were at white, a white wire. Now, we're coming to... See this? Follow the the green. Now we're coming to a yellow. We're becoming a yellow wire. Now, there's no circle, there's no dot over here. That means we're not connected. So we proceed in this direction to this number 18 now. What's the rating? 7.5 amps. So we went from, let's look at it again. We went from 80 amp fuse the 40 amp fuse, the finally we got down to 7.5 amp fuse. That's the lowest rating. The other side of the fuse is now what? It was a yellow wire. Now it became yellow with a black stripe. So the second usually, the second uh, um, color is usually the striped one. Usually, in many makes of models. And we come to something called a control unit. Whenever you see, whenever you see this symbol, with all these terminals like this, it usually means it's a module or a unit, a control unit, and there are pins over here or terminals. See these little uh, circles? That tells you it's a, a pin connection or a terminal connection. So coming from the fuse, which was which number? Number 18 fuse. We went through a yellow black wire. We got to this one, this terminal over here of this unit, this module called a control unit. The purpose of this control unit is not, is not that concerning because we're just trying to learn how to follow connections right now. And then we'll get into the voltages and all those things. So we took care of one, okay? Now let's go to the other fuse. Remember there was another path. Now we're starting with number 48, which is 30 amps. And what color is it? It's a white wire. We have a choice. We could go here. We can go here again. It depends what you're looking for. Let's continue here. This is a white wire. Okay? White wire. There's a splice here, a splice here. We decide to go here. Follow the arrows. The white wire. Same white wire. See? Same white wire. Now we go to another fuse. There's a lot of fuses in this diagram. Number 20 fuse. We go into one side of the, of the fuse. Rated at what? 10 amps. A number 20 fuse. We come out the other side of the fuse. And guess where it goes again? Same module as before. So there are two paths for this control unit. Two paths for it. The green path. The blue path. A yellow black wire and a black and white wire. So far, two wires are going in into this terminal. Now, usually they'll, be, like I said, usually they'll be numbered like this will be pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four. Again, this is just an exercise, not a real a schematic like I showed you before. So, so far we're going pretty good, right? We're going these paths and we know how to follow simple things, okay? Now, going over here, as you see over here, going to the other sides of this control unit. So how many pins are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven connections, seven pins. If you notice over here, this is parking brake switch, close lever up. This is the parking brake switch that you have that when you park, let's say on the hill or something like that, you don't want it to roll. As a case, uh, uh, as a precaution of emergency, you usually put the parking brake on. This tells this module, which is controlling the lights, it's telling it I'm putting the parking brake on. I remember to put the parking brake on. You know where you find this? You find these things in um, the Fords, the F250s uh, um, F and F150, those, those type of vehicles where you turn off the, the car, the lights are still on. You take the the you take the 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 key out of an ignition switch. Lights are still on. That's because it's waiting for you to put on the parking brake as a precaution, as a safety measure. 
When you put the parking brake on, then your lights go off. So this is causing the, the lights to go off and on, obviously. But as long as you have the parking brake on as a precaution. Also, you see this parking fluid level switch making sure, making sure the brake fluid level is at the correct level. These are inputs. When something is going into something, it's an input. When something is controlling something else, it is an output. How do I know these are inputs? Well, we see, first of all, we have to look at these, what these are connected to. This is connected to a parking brake switch, so obviously it's using the switch as an input. This is using this level of the switch as an input. And then it's going to go to another one out here as an output probably to go and switch off the lights. So there are many inputs here also. Input from switches, input from sensors. But we first we need, always we need is 12 volts. Always when you see a module control unit, always when you see a PCM, a computer unit, you have to look for 12 volts. There might be more than one, might be more than two, might be three. Doesn't matter. Whatever it needs to operate. And always needs a ground. Where's the ground? The ground is right here through a black wire. This is the symbol for a ground. As you can tell by G4, what G means ground, G means ground. Here, it doesn't say G, but it's a ground. So, we're going to get back to this one. Voltage we're going to do later. First, we're just concerned with, we want to follow schematics and we want to understand automotive schematics. We come to something called a combination light switch. Nowadays, the combination switches, the switches for parking lamps, headlamps, uh, high beam, low beam, are contained in a unit, in a switch. Like Toyotas and Hondas and all these. They put everything, all the switches, in a unit. And they give it a, a combination light switch. So, switches, before we go off on a tangent, what's a symbol for a switch? This is the symbol for a switch. Little circles and toggling this means it's making a contact from here to here from here to here from here to here this is making contact from here to here this is making contact from here to here make when you toggle the switch this will go in this location and this location depending what you choose now very important when it comes to switches there can be three different positions but it depends where the connection is going to. That's the one that will give you the option of connecting to the circuit. Let's explain that. You see over here how many terminals. I call these S1. I call these S2, S3, and S4 to make it simpler. The book didn't label it, but I'm trying to make it simpler, simplified. Three terminals. No connection here. You don't see a line. You don't see a line. Two no line which one has a line only three here's the line what about this one what about this one one two and three terminal one does that have a line to it no does terminal two have a line no which one is the only one that has a line three this one okay so wherever there's a connection that's the position that you could connect to you have the option for example one has no connection, but two, if you look, there is a connection, and three is a connection. That means when you toggle the switch in position two, you have a connection. When you toggle the switch in position three, you have a connection. But let's throw something into it a little more sophisticated. Look at S1, S2, and S3. What do they have in common? Guess what they have in common. See this little dotted line? See this dotted line between here and here and here? That means when I move the selector of the terminal on one, they all move together. So S1, if I move from, this, from position one to position two on this one, guess what I'm doing for this one? I'm moving him from position one to position two. Guess what I'm doing to him also? I'm moving from S1 to S2. And so on and so on. If I'm going to S3 on this one, I'm going S3 here, I'm going S3 here. Except this one. This, only the dot goes here. One, two, three, these are controlled simultaneously. This is not. You don't see the dot here. Okay? Now, 
I'm going to continue this because there's so much to do. I made a video of this about a year ago. And uh, thank God it was, that, that's the one that I have like 36,000 views. Hard to believe that I have so many views on one video. It's amazing to me. I don't know what I did different then that I'm doing now. But whatever reason it is, I don't know, maybe tags, titles, description, whatever it is. Um, I want to go over it again because people are still confused. Automotive, automotive technical uh, schematics are very tough. And this is, not, this is the real schematic. This is what the real schematic if you go to to uh all data and all these they have different types of symbols they don't have the real symbols this is the real symbols right here these are true symbols of automotive that really a person has to learn i'm going to continue this one please go to my channel this is part one if you want to see the continuation of this we're going to continue in in this path and go over the voltages um joe electronic schematic for auto my monetized one and the other one automotive electronic schematics for joseph which is not monetized but but needs a lot of views needs a lot of work that's what i'm doing now thanks